Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. As promised from my previous video, here is my A6 journal setup. And this is the cover that I am using. This is the A6 Hobonichi Petite Roses cover. And I did do an unboxing and haul video of this cover, so you can check that out if you'd like more information. And inside this cover, I have an a 6 So let me just open it up real quick. Over here on the side, I have this pen. This is the Bolograph Epoca pen. It's a ballpoint pen. And it's all right. It's not my favorite, but I'm just trying to use it up. So I'm just gonna leave that there. I've been really enjoying this cover. These double pen loops have really grown on me. I like how it keeps my cover closed if I put a pen on it. And when I open this up to journal, there's no clasp that gets in the way of my hand when I write. When I use a VDS cover or a Moterm, Jillio, any covers with a clasp, it looks really nice. On pictures, it photographs really well, but it's not very functional, I've learned, as far as long-form journaling goes, because when I'm writing and I get to the middle of the page, the clasp tends to get in the way of my hand, like I have to keep it flat and I'm always pushing up against it, and that got really annoying. So before this cover, I was actually using the Sojourner A6 folio in the Miriam and Orr scoop pocket. I love this cover. It's so soft and squishy and it's really durable. I didn't baby this at all. I tossed this in my bag. I didn't use a cover for this or not a cover, a pouch. And here's the elastic. I ordered this with a brown elastic, but I switched it up into this pink one that I got from Amazon and that looks so much better. And then after I got this cover, I switched to the Hobonichi cover and opening her up. Here's my Stalogy. And I did decorate the pockets just to make it personable to me. These are vinyl stickers that I picked up on Amazon and I have them washi taped down into the cover here so that it doesn't move around, which is why this butterfly is just kind of floating in there. I have it washi taped on the back. And then I have a picture here of me and my son. And then in the back, I have another vinyl sticker. This one I did not washi tape, or did I? Oh, it just came off, <laughs> but there it is. And then on the side here, I have this scalloped edge as always. I love adding this into my cover. It just makes it look so fun and dainty. I can't take this out. I think I also washi tape this in. Ever since I learned that I could use washi tape to stick down my deco, I've been doing nothing but washi tape. It's washi tape everywhere. Washi tape has been my life. And then again, here's my notebook. It's an A6stology, just the regular grid notebook. I don't think they have this in any other formats, but I really, really like the A6 size for journaling. It's not too big for me where I feel like I'm kind of drowning into the page, but lots of room for writing and stickers and collaging. So I find this to be a really good size for journaling. On the front of the notebook, I have some more stickers here just to make it fun and cutesy. I had no idea that Stology was short for standard and technology. So that's a fun fact for you. <laughs> and then opening her up, I did decorate the inner cover with some this isn't scrapbook paper, this is construction paper. And then I printed some floral graphics on it. This graphic is from UNI Graphics. I use her printables a lot just because I find them really cute and they're really the only printables I own right now, so I should get some more, but they've been working really well for me so far. And then I added some stickers here because this is actually a misprint. So I originally wanted to use this construction paper for my ring binder and I wanted to have this background on the back of my divider and then have the title divider on the other side and I messed up and I ended up printing both of them on the same page so if you look closely here there's some overlap so that's where the mess up was and I didn't want to throw away my pink construction paper because I felt like it was going to be a waste, so I held on to it and I decided to use it in my journal. And I just covered up my mistake with some stickers. And these stickers are from the Antiquarian Sticker Book. This book, and you can find this on Amazon. I will link it down below. I found this sticker book to be so useful and I've finished up a lot of pages in this one. So something I started doing was rip out the sheets that I finished just so I can count them in my stationary empties this year. I am tracking that, so it's been a lot of fun. These pages I finished last year, and once I completely finish this book, I'm going to salvage this and use them as sticker release paper. And yeah, I really, really like the sticker book. I also got the bibliophile sticker book, but I haven't started that one yet because I still have plenty of stickers in this one. And then on the next page, this postcard is from Sojourner when I bought my a6 folio cover and I really like this graphic. 
So I decided to just keep it once again and just stick it into my journal. So here's the back of the thank you card. And then here we go with the proper journaling pages. So at the beginning of the year, I did pure writing pretty much, just a lot of words. So yeah, starting from here, just a lot of words, very little stickers if there are any. I tend to go back and forth with my daily journal where I feel like, oh, collaging and putting down stickers takes up too much time, too much brain power, and I just wanna be able to write whatever I want. So I stick to writing only. And then after a while, I would feel like this is so boring. I'm just writing and writing and my pages aren't very inspiring. So then I go right back to using stickers and collaging. So I definitely swing between two extremes with my journal. But since my journals are just for me, I don't pressure myself to stick to one type of style or other. There are no rules. I just go with what feels right for me at the time. So after a while, I did start using stickers again. Let me see if I can show a page. Okay, this was a really fun one. So this is extra paper from my inner cover here. I decided to stick that into this page and then some butterflies. And I think this is my favorite spread in my journal so far because it looks really cute, but there's still plenty of room for writing. So as you see from the top here, I would write down the date with my ballpoint pen just for the sake of using this up. And then I would use a matching mild liner for the date. I just find that to be a fun way to date my entries and it also gives me a visual separation between my entries. So I'm gonna jump to the back now because a lot of these pages are personal. I did reserve some pages in the back for random notes, brain dumping and all that. So just as an example, I wrote down all of the fountain pens that I have inked up for this journal just to kind of help me get through them. Of course, I could look at my pen case for these, but I'm a very list oriented person. So listing things down does help me. And the rest of these pages are just lists. Here you can see my tabs, just like Elden Ring notes, packing lists, some channel stuff. It's just a lot of brain dumping. And then something I did for this journal is I made some ink sample pages in the back just so I could have a good idea of how an ink behaves on this notebook. Plus, anytime I make a video, I'm never able to flip through my pages because again, they're personal and private and I feel like this way I can give a better insight as to how my journal looks. So I decided to make some sample pages of all of the fountain pen inks that I used on this journal as well as the pen that I used it with. And the things I write here aren't personal at all. They're just random stuff that I wrote down just to fill up the page, just to show how the ink looks. So here is a sample of my Moonman One Tie Mini fountain pen with diamond scribble purple. And then I did leave the back blank so that you can see if there's any bleed through. Since this paper is thin, I think there's always going to be ghosting, but I don't mind ghosting at all. I actually do like how this looks. And then over here is my Moonman M8 that I recently used up and I had Lamy Tourmaline on it, which I am trying to pan. You can check out my project pan videos for more information. And then in the back, there is some bleed through. The only paper that's ever able to handle this ink is Tomoe River paper. So that's really interesting. And then my Nagasawa Pro Gear Slim, which I do have on me here. So here is my Nagasawa, beautiful pen. And then my Moonman One Side right here pink pens for spring. So I have this inked with Diamine Oxford Blue. And here's what the back looks like. A little bit of bleed through there. I think my pen burped. I messed up with my ink fill here. I didn't realize that I didn't put the converter all the way in, so it did leak. And I think that's what was happening here is sometimes the pen would burp because probably some air got trapped because ink was leaking and it wasn't properly put in and all that. Then again, another Lamy Tourmaline pen with my Lamy Safari. And here is the back, again, bleed through, but that's okay. I've expected that with this ink, so it doesn't really bother me. And then I have a bunch of pens inked with my Diatrementis Fuchsia document ink because I was testing out what different nibs look like with that ink. So here's my Platinum Preppy. Here's the back. And then my Twisby Eco. As you can see, it looks very different from the Platinum Preppy. I was really surprised to see this difference. This particular pen, which is my mint blue pen, it seemed to be a gusher compared to my other Twisby Ecos. I have three. So I have one currently inked right now, my pink one with diamine imperial purple. And this pen doesn't seem to be a gusher at all compared to my mint blue. So 
I can show you in a little bit. And then my pilot vanishing point decimal, extra fine. So this is what the fuchsia ink looked like with that. And then here, another Lamy tourmaline fill. This is the Moonman or Majan Q1. So that really big fat pen I had, that's how it looked on my notebook. I felt like the Q1 was more of a medium nib to me, even though it said fine. But I really liked that pen. It wrote really smoothly. It did take me some getting used to writing with such a wide pen, but I really enjoyed it. And it lasted me a long time because it was an eyedropper pen and it could hold three milliliters of ink. So I filled it up to the max and then I wanted to see how fast I could finish that fill. And it took me, I think two months or two and a half. I didn't write with it every day, but it was a long time before I got to finish it, but I did, so hooray. And then here is my Nagasawa Pro Gear Slim Mini. So I have the mini one that I bought from Jet Pens and this is Diamine Amber. It's such a pretty color can't really read it well so it's more of an accent ink i think and then this is the twisby eco with moodless x feathers so this one was my yellow twisby eco and as you can see it writes way finer than my mint blue one here's the difference my mint blue wrote broader for whatever reason it could also be the ink i'll have to test this ink with my yellow eco and see if there's a difference the last one is my Esther Brooke Esty in Diamond Scribble Purple and I did mess up this page. I smudged it. I realized that I was running out of ink on this pen which is why I decided to make the sample page because I wanted to write it down before I ran out and I ended up running out of ink in the middle of making the sample page so I thought that was really funny but there you go. There's some ink samples for you with this notebook. I'm going to be doing this for every journal that I use from now on because this was really fun to do. I think it's really fun to see how the ink looks on every notebook without flipping through a lot of personal stuff, you know? And then in the back, I also did a journal ink log, which I haven't updated. So I need to do that. This is March and then this is supposed to be April and then May. I just forgot about this ink log, so I'm going to do that tonight. And then in the back, some more random lists. That's it for the notebook. And then as you can see, I do have these tabs on the side because I do like to bring them in the middle of a journal entry. When I'm in the zone, I don't really like to stop and move to the back of my journal just to write down a list. I just keep writing on the same page. And then I tab out the page where I made the list just so I don't lose it because I used to do that in my previous journals. I would write an entry and then decide that I want to bring dump a list onto the same page and then I don't label it. So it just gets lost into the abyss, you know? So this way I'm able to look back at them in the future if I want to. I don't really look back at these pages, but I feel like these could be helpful in the future if I do want to reference something. And I use these really cheap page flags from Stationery JP on Amazon. I don't know if they do this anymore, but if you order from them on their Amazon page, they would send these page flags to go with your order. So that's what this is. I'm just trying to use these up. I'm not trying to be pretty at all with this journal. There's no set aesthetic to it. It's just, again, whatever I feel like. And I just put in the tabs where it makes sense because these tabs are really long and I didn't bother cutting them. So I have some tabs on the side and on the top. And then in the back, I don't have anything. I always just kept the back empty and functional. I do keep my writing board in here. So that's where that goes. And then I close up the notebook. So that is my journal setup. And I also want to go through real quick my journal kit setup. So let me just take these back. Here is my current journal kit. This is a Heat Lab pen case that I bought on Amazon. And it's been working really well for me. I love how functional it is. Prior to this, I was using two separate cases for my planning and journaling. So I had my superior labor pen roll for my journaling supplies. And I still do love this pen roll very much. And I think I will always go back to this one way or another. But here it is. It's aged beautifully since I first bought it. And then for planning, I had this DLD Sunstar pouch, which I also really liked. But it just got annoying for me to use two different cases. So I decided to put them all into one case. And I didn't have one that would fit everything. So I decided to pick up this Lahit Lab case from Amazon and I'm so happy I did because it's been working out so so well for me so on the outside you get these two pockets and I just have my Moterm magnetic clips onto the front 
I really like these clips. They're so cute. So I have the one that has just the one flap. There's another case that has two flaps and it has a double zipper, but I didn't really like how that looked. So I decided to go with the single flap instead and it fits a lot, which I'm really happy about. So this is the pen side of my case. These are some of my currently inked pens. I just noticed that I have all pink fountain pens. So I have this, my Jinhao X40, my Tweezby Eco, my Nagasawa Pro Gear Slim, my Lamy Safari Pen, and then over here is my Moonman One Time Mini. So I have all pink pens right now. That's so cute and fun. But yes, super excited. I love pink. So I just have these pens tucked into here and I don't have a strict order for these pens. It's just wherever they fit. I do try to keep them together, but if there's no room, then I just put them on the other side here. Not a big deal. And then I have my Posca paint pens here on the side. So I use these instead of corrector fluid because I feel like they're easier to work with. And then I have some mild liners for my journal, my brush pen, and then a spare ballpoint pen for my planner. And then on the other side, I have my traveler's notebook pen clip here that came with my Ip Ben traveler's notebook and then some page flags on the side. So this is the Avery metallic page flags and then the stationary JP one I just showed you. And in the back I have a Instax mini print. I use this as a template when I'm trying to make spreads just to give myself an idea of what it would look like with a print. And then on this side, it's just an open pocket and this is where I keep my bulky things. So I have my petite scissors here. I keep my Moonman One Time Mini here because it doesn't have a pen clip. So there's no way for me to put it in here. I guess I can add it here, but I feel like it's more secure on this pocket. My Elmer's glue stick. I have an eraser and some mini post-it notes. This is from Watchy Things. Some more page flags. These are animal themed. They're so cute. I got this from a friend my rulers so i have two from kokio and they got pretty banged up but i've had this for a long time now and i love them another beveled ruler and then some more mini post-its so that's all i have for this pocket i love how roomy it is it can fit a lot of things so i'm gonna hide this back here so my son doesn't have any ideas i keep this case out of reach for him but you never know then i just try to stack it up in a logical way. So there you go. That's my pen case and my journal. So I hope you enjoy this video. I hope it gave you some ideas. Let me know down below what you're using for your current journal and journal kit. Thank you so much for watching this video. This is Baba Notes and I'll see you next time. Bye!